When angle theta is in standard position, it rotates in a positive counterclockwise direction from the ray that corresponds to the positive x-axis. We can draw negative theta having the same magnitude as theta in the negative clockwise direction. As we saw in TR-36, the symmetry across the x-axis means that their cosines are the same. Cosine negative theta equals cosine theta, and their sines have the same magnitude but are in opposite directions. So sine negative theta equals negative sine theta. Let me show the triangle for theta in green. Its short sides are the cosine and sine of theta. Blue for cosine, red for sine. The hypotenuse is 1 since we're on a unit circle. Now let's make the triangle for negative theta in gray. Same cosine, opposite sine. The rest of this video is going to be drawing gray triangles all the way around the circle. We'll identify the angle in terms of theta and then state the angles cosine and sine in terms of cosine theta and sine theta just like we did for negative theta. For the next triangle, we'll go to the next axis, the positive y-axis, which represents the angle pi over 2 radians, the right angle. Then we'll rotate back an angle equal to theta. The resulting angle is pi over 2 minus theta radians. For now on, when we see a pi, we'll assume radians. Here's the cosine and sine of pi over 2 minus theta. I probably don't need to draw the triangle, but I think it makes the symmetry more clear. We want to express these lengths in terms of these lengths, which are cosine theta and sine theta. Let's start with the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, which is the short distance in the positive direction. That short distance is the same as sine theta. So, cosine pi over 2 minus theta equals sine theta, always. Whenever you see cosine pi over 2 minus theta in an expression or proof, you can always simplify it to sine theta. Here's the sine of pi over 2 minus theta, which is the longer distance in the positive direction. It's the same distance as cosine theta. So, sine pi over 2 minus theta equals cosine theta. It's an identity, so it's always true. You can always simplify sine pi over 2 minus theta to cosine theta. We should have some intuition about this if we think about common angles. Let's assume theta is pi over 6, or 30 degrees. Pi over 2 minus theta is pi over 3, or 60 degrees. These are common angles we've memorized. The cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2, which we called the large number in TR-15 and the sine of pi over 3 is also square root of 3 over 2. And sine pi over 6 is 1 half, the small number, and cosine pi over 3 is 1 half. Each angle's cosine is its complement's sine. See TR-13z for a more thorough discussion. In that video, I explain how the three co-functions, cosine, cotangent, and cosecant, got their names. Now let's put the triangle on the other side of the y-axis by taking pi over 2 and adding theta. Here's the cosine and sine of pi over 2 plus theta. What are their lengths in terms of cosine theta and sine theta? Let's be careful in quadrant 2 because the cosine is negative. Cosine pi over 2 plus theta is the shorter length, but it's in the negative direction. So cosine pi over 2 plus theta equals negative sine theta. Sine pi over 2 plus theta equals cosine theta. Anytime we see these expressions, we can simplify to these. Hopefully, you aren't thinking about memorizing these new identities, since they're so easy to see on a unit circle. I'll go a little faster now. Let's move over to the negative x-axis, which represents a standard position angle of pi radians. Let's subtract theta to get the angle pi minus theta. The cosine of pi minus theta equals negative cosine theta, same size, opposite direction. And sine pi minus theta equals sine theta, same size, same direction. Now let's add theta to pi radians. Here's our triangle. Both trig functions are the opposite direction to thetas, so cosine pi plus theta equals negative cosine theta, 
and sine pi plus theta equals negative sine theta. Pretty easy to see on the unit circle, right? We're almost done. This last axis is negative y, corresponding to 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 minus theta is here. Cosine 3 pi over 2 minus theta equals negative sine theta, and sine 3 pi over 2 minus theta equals negative cosine theta. And here's 3 pi over 2 plus theta. Cosine 3 pi over 2 plus theta equals sine theta, and sine 3 pi over 2 plus theta equals negative cosine theta. As I've already said, the whole point of this topic is that when we see compound arguments like these for a trig function, we can replace them with trig functions having just theta as the argument. Then we can use all of our other tools and techniques to simplify or prove identities. Let's do an example. Simplify cosine 3 pi over 2 plus theta times sine pi minus theta minus sine 3 pi over 2 minus theta times sine pi over 2 plus theta. We have four trig functions, each with compound arguments. So let's simplify by substitution one at a time. 3 pi over 2 plus theta is down here, and here's its cosine. It's positive and the same sign as sine theta. So cosine 3 pi over 2 plus theta can always be simplified to sine theta. The next term is sine pi minus theta. Here's the angle, and here's the sine. Same as sine theta, and same direction. So sine pi minus theta equals sine theta. Sine 3 pi over 2 minus theta is right here in quadrant 3. Here's its sine. It's negative with the same magnitude as cosine theta. So sine 3 pi over 2 minus theta equals negative cosine theta. The last term is sine pi over 2 plus theta. Here's its sine, positive, and the same as cosine theta. So, sine pi over 2 plus theta equals cosine theta. Being careful with our sines, these expressions simplify to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which we know equals 1. So we have 14 reflection identities, none of which need to be memorized, all of which can be seen in the symmetry of the unit circle. The first two are called even-odd identities. The next two are called cofunction identities. The other ten don't have special names that I'm aware of, but they're all the result of a unit circle symmetry. There's no TR-37X video, but here are the 14 compound expressions in scrambled order. If you can see the unit circle in your head, and simplify these to cosine and sine functions whose argument is simply theta, you will have demonstrated mastery of this topic. Pause if you like, I'll show the answers, and that will be the end of this video.